made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And that's a whole lie. God made Adam, Eve, and Steve. Obviously, God made Adam, God made Eve, and God made Steve. But God certainly didn't make Adam for Steve. never be that someone from the pulpit would have a dim view of someone calling out clear sin, sin that is outlined in the scripture that there is no debate about. That should never be. But what we have now is we have people, particularly this particular pastor, I think his name is Gino Gibson, who is, he has a problem with people calling out issues with the LGBTQ. And it's not that we have an issue with the LGBTQ, it's that the LGBTQ is that that particular group wants to put it in our face and are forcing us to deal with it. So guess what? We'll deal with it. Talk about the LGBT. No, don't do that. We want to cancel them because we don't learn two or three scriptures. Now let's just go ahead and deal with the, with the elephant in the room because someone's going to bring it up and it should be brought up. The effeminate mannerisms that this guy is portraying, it's going to come out with the hand moving and the bending of his wrist and so forth, that's going to be an issue. And so that point should be apparent. That should not even be seen in a man. It just should not, even with the, the soft clothing that some men wear and so forth, this should be a clear line between who is a man of God and who is not. And sealing it in the church, God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And that's a whole lie. God made Adam, Eve, and Steve. And to call it a whole lie, he knows perfectly well what people mean by God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. The point is, and he knows that mankind was not, man was not made for another man. I heard it put this way that if you put 100 women and 10 men on an island, if we come back in 100 years, that island would be a thriving community with men, women, boys, girls, children, males, females of all ages. But if we put on that same island, 100 trans women, that is, and it's not a real term, but men who want to be women with 10 real men, then in 100 years, that entire society would be dead. Why? Because it cannot fulfill the mandate that God has required of us to be fruitful and multiply. They can't be fruitful nor multiply. We just get an attitude if Steve like Adam. Well, we should get an attitude if Steve likes Adam. Now, truth be told, again, we don't care about it as much as you think we care about it. The issue is you are putting it in our face, and so we deal with it. And what it seems as though that's happening, especially with you, is that you might be either giving approval to it or you're certainly voicing your displeasure for someone calling out sin. Remember, Paul puts it this way. He says, speaking of this issue of sin, in Romans 1, 32, he says, and although they did not know the ordinances of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. And so it seems as though either he's giving approval or at least not even expressing disapproval to this particular sin. That's a problem, especially from someone in the pulpit. What I sanctify itself say stuff like I and you ah, it's gay pride month ah now the issue is that people aren't and you may not like the way that people are bothered by them express their displeasure with it but the bible is clear it says that we do not rejoice in unrighteousness but we rejoice in and with the truth and so if we're giving the truth you should rejoice in someone proclaiming that that point should not be underscored you have a problem with someone calling out sin and naming what the truth is. What they gotta have pride about. Let me go on record and say this. Your pastor is 100% straight. Never in my life have I ever had to go out and defend my sexuality because it's never been an issue, it's ever come up. No one's ever had a doubt about it. And so I shouldn't have to, nor would I ever have to, come and preface my statement by saying, I am not gay, I'm not, that's not my issue. That's never, or that I'm, I'm straight. I've never had to do so, and I would hope that no one would ever have to wonder that. Now, somebody who might want to say something crazy and just throw crazy stuff, they just saying stuff, but no one has ever 
thought that or question that. And that should never have to be an issue with you. But it makes it makes us wonder and it, it, it causes us to wonder why are you actually defending or at least getting upset with people who are calling sin out? Listen to me. Don't even clap. Homosexuality has never been my issue. My issue was heterosexuality. So you say your issue is heterosexuality. Well, fine. Some people's issue is homosexuality. Surely he's not blind to see what's happening out there. Everything is in a rainbow. No matter where you go, it's pride this, pride that. And you mean to tell me you've got a problem with someone calling out or trying to help someone else's sin? It's true. There are some people who might go about it the wrong way. Uh, but what the pastor should do is show people how to do it the right way. The Bible says this about a bond server, about a preacher, about a pastor. He says that, one, uh, he must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to all, able to teach. That part is called into question with him, being able to teach patient when wrong. Verse 25, with gentleness, correcting those who are in opposition. In other words, folks who are doing wrong or in opposition to the truth, correct those who are in opposition to the truth. How so? With gentleness. Didn't say don't correct them, but how to do so with gentleness. Why? If perhaps God may grant them repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, you give them the truth, whether your issue is homosexuality or heterosexuality. God is not asking you to only preach about what your issue is. He's asking the pastor, the preacher to preach about what his issue is. God is the one who has a problem with homosexuality. He has a problem with people who are also heterosexual, who are sleeping around, who are promiscuous. He has a problem with that. He has a problem with all sorts of sin. But we wouldn't tell the person who has committed murder, I'm not going to call that out because murder has never really been my sin. My issue has always been lying. No, sin is sin and we call it out. And so it calls into question how serious you are about doing God's work. Maybe Paul is right that you only want to placate to the people with itching ears to give them what they want to hear or more to the point, not want to defend them. But am I your enemy, as Paul says, because I am telling you the truth? I'm telling you the truth about this sin. Not saying that you are, uh, you are, you have no value, but the fact of the matter is God calls this a sin. And, and so what should we do? We should, out of love, let people know that it is, and it's something that God takes serious. Even though this pastor doesn't think it's serious, we do. And if you want to make us have pride in what you are pushing because it's not just that they want to be left alone. That's not the issue. The issue now is that they, they want us to accept them. They want us to not only accept, but also to uh, see their pride and to rejoice in their pride. In other words, rejoice in their sin. So let them have pride. But not only that, they also want us to uh, celebrate it and promote it, even if it means promoting it to our children. Well, we because you're pushing it in our face, we now have to deal with it. Unfortunately, this pastor doesn't want to for whatever reason. I can't speak to that, but we know what we ought to do, and that is be diligent. And so if it's sin, regardless if it's your sin or my sin, if it's something I have to deal with personally or I don't deal with, we still call it out. Amen.